Hey guys, it's me, Missy with Rustic Relics, and we are live. So it's been a crazy week this week. Um, it's homecoming week, so we've been here and there and everywhere, and I don't have a lot prepared for you today, but I do have a few things that I do want to show you. So let's get started. All right, so here I have um, the full-size sheet of decoupage papers that we have on our website. Um, and I kind of want to just show you how I want to use them um, it, to make a sign. And then we'll move on to a few other projects that we got going on. So I had some scrap wood that I didn't want to waste. And so we come up with something for that that I think will be fun to show you. And then we have a few new things on our website that we added to. So I have the two papers and I have the two boards. So first thing we're gonna do is paint our boards white and I'm gonna use cotton to do these. So that way our background will be bright. So we're just gonna give them a coat of white. Where's the glaring? On my side, it ain't no. nothing with you. All right, Paige said hi there. Hi. Donna said hello from Missouri. Hello from Missouri. Tony said hi, y'all. How are y'all doing today? Tony is from the Birmingham area. Oh, okay. So it's just right up the road. Right up the road, that's right. Right up the road. Yeah. So has she ever been, to, have you ever been to the store? That's not probably that far. Tony yeah. Witten, probably so. I can't really see the photo all that well, so I'm betting she's visited us before. Probably so. Paige says she's doing great. She's still working on her decoupage pumpkins. Ooh, yeah. And a leather journal for her brother's birthday. Oh, that's cool. A leather journal's right up your alley. Yeah, it is. They're always giving me gruff, her and May May. You've got a fancy leather journal. Tony's never, she hasn't been to the store. She's planning on it, though. Oh, okay, okay. I, I know I'm going off, off, off script here, but everybody's always giving me gruff and a little bit of grief because I, fancy one. I have one of these, and it's leather, but let me show you the pages. It's so cool. My uh, Missy's mama gave this to me. Yeah. As a gift. I have no clue where it came from. It's got old pages. I don't know if you guys can see it really well. But it's so cool. It's really cool. Donna the, uh, made it. Heck yeah. We're made it too. We're made it <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I'll never forget, Missy went over one time and got these stamp sets to do the stamp bags with. And uh, Kaylee became obsessed with stamping Stamped all of bags. our bags. Yeah. We have a bunch of little Christmas stamps, so she stamps all the bags. Yeah. Right. Paige, I'm getting ready to do a... Uh, I'm going to be doing a uh, book. I'm going to be doing it in the steampunk design, but I'm going to use decoupage and then some brass gears that I found and some brass keys that were at the store. And then I ordered some wooden gears to make it look really cool. I, I plan on doing that video this week and have it ready for next week around Wednesday. Yes. This week's been crazy because it's, like I said, it's homecoming week for the high schoolers here. Yeah. And um, our kids, we, you know, we have the football players, so there's that. And then um, our youngest daughter is a freshman in high school. So it's just, you know, and neither one of them can drive. They're not 16 yet. So we are the taxi. Yes. So it's just been a crazy busy week. Thank you, Marilyn. Hey, May May. May May. May May's here. 
Nay, nay. I was telling them about that journal where you were like, I was flexing. Flexing. It's at the house now. So you can flex at the house? Yeah, so I can, yeah. So I can just flex to myself. So flex to yourself. That's funny. All right, so... I'll, good morning, uh, Tina. All I'm doing is just giving it a good base coat of white. And then we'll just let that dry up. And always, if you've never used Dixie Belle paint, it dries really fast. It does. Because it it's dries just really chalk-based paint. Hey, Shannon. Shannon. Yeah. It's, it's that Shannon. That Shannon. Okay, so here's my image. Okay, so on this one, it's a full page image. Image. And you can tear it, but I kind of just want to cut it to fit the board. And so what I did was I put it on the board and then I just folded the crease down. So it has the line, so I kind of know where to cut. So I'm just going to cut this one. And I'm going to, I'm kind of going to cut over the crease so that way I can distress a little bit of it off if I need to. I'm just going to cut it. How'd y'all like the start screen today? I decided that it was kind of goofy us starting and not knowing that we're started yet. So we, we decided to get a start screen. start screen. So hopefully that worked out and looks pretty good. Which one should I go with that one? Or? I have two lines. I said really you picked a project. Whoa. I picked a project. That's right. Yesterday I said I didn't know what I was doing. I came home and figured it out. I helped. Oh, well, yeah. You helped me. Too. I just said, you know what? I'm going to go out there and make some stuff real quick. I We got the frames that go around these pre-made. So all I have to do is run outside and glue them on and staple them and then bring them back inside so you guys will see what the final product actually looks like. Yeah, I think it's going to look really cute. Like, I like it a lot. So, yeah, Kaylee started uh, stamping our store bags. And Kay, she's our youngest daughter. She's 14. Yeah, she's the freshman. And yeah. She, uh, she got, that's, so when Missy went over there to May May's store and bought these stamps and the inks and stuff, Kaylee just started... I got that. It was when I got my Misty. Yeah, it's when you got the Misty. That's right. And Kaylee started stamping, stamping Finally bags. She's misty. always she's always stamping. Yeah. Thanks, Debbie. Yeah. We're excited you got to catch us live too. Yay. Okay, so I'm just letting these dry a little bit before I go through and put my Mod Podge on there. But let me show you. Let me I can show the block. Yeah. Maybe. Okay, yeah. so um we had a lot of requests for the um just plain stained blocks that that way you can put the decoupage paper you paint um, whatever color you want yeah, you to can paint, use whatever yeah. so these are on the website so you can get they're ready to go they're stained and ready to go so you could put your white base on it and then you could put your decoupage paper on there so you could do the full white or you can just almost do the dry brush technique on it so and then just make sure that you're where your paper is has got your good base coat of white um, but you can do it however you want so we have these available on our website um, we only have them in walnut right now yep. um, that's Just the most walnut. popular color for stain wise um, but these are available on our website and they are two dollars a piece two dollars a piece yep and then we will be adding some of just the single image decoupage paper that fits yes, these perfectly the, the you know how right now we're selling the double sheets. Yeah. We're going to start selling the, instead of the double, we're going to start selling the single sheets. So you can pick, pick whichever, whichever image you image want to you use. Want instead of having two images. So if there's two on one sheet and you don't want, you only want the one, you can be able to purchase just the one. So we're working on that this week to get that on the website. Yes. The single. That'll but be. For right now we have the blocks and then we of course have the double image sheets that those work perfectly for these two because they fit these blocks so you can order these through us and we will ship those out to you hey jay it's good to see you buddy and then okay so it's almost dry i can kind of see it 
get a run on this side and that side. Well, but it don't I, matter because it's covered up the with the frame. frame. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, everything that we're using, all the links are in the description today. I had to run through because we decided last minute that we we're going to be using these appliques by Would You Bend yeah. on our stuff. So I had to add those real quick. One, I had to make sure I could add them because we order those through Dixie Bell Paint Company. And uh, yes, I can add them. So I added them. I added the ones that we're using today. And obviously, I added the gel stain uh, earlier that's, this morning. Right. That's the gel stain that we use to stain the blocks. And again, all the links are in the description of this video. Right. Right. I finally nailed that one, I think, by getting everything in there on time. Right. So I think I can... I don't think I can start with I'm gonna put our, I'm gonna put our golden retriever outside. Yeah, because she's panting. She's panting like she wants to. Come on, Seth. Come on, Seth. Okay. okay, so all I'm gonna do with this is well. put a coat of Mod Podge on it. So that I can put my paper on it. You don't wanna go out? She don't wanna go out. Imagine that. He's like, I'm an old dog, I don't wanna go out. She'll let you know when she wants to come back in. I, th I like the four ounce squirt bottles better because you can just squirt it right on you it. You can. It around. Yeah. But I kind of go through it a lot. Missy uses Mod Podge by the gallon. Yeah. Yeah, they're five. They're five and a half inches by five and a half inches by one and a half inches thick. That way, they can stand up. They're really good sitters. We experimented with different thicknesses, and different really? thicknesses won't. They don't stand up. You hit, you bump, you bump the counter. They fall over. It's like okay. So we went with those. And since they're pre-stained, also I didn't have, realize how much wear and tear you actually put on your uh, tape, your saw blades. Right. And saw blades are not, they are not cheap. I kind of just want to make sure I'm lining this up right. Because ye yesterday, what, I cut 70, seven, no, 17 times 10, 170. I cut 170 of those. We didn't get 170 stain because I had to stop from doing that and then start working on cutting the the uh, cutting boards out. And I'm cutting those out with a scroll saw instead of a jigsaw now so I can get more accurate cuts and tighter turns. It's almost, using a scroll saw is almost like um, sewing. Sorry. No, you're good. So you're just smoothing it out with your hand? That's all I'm doing is just smoothing it out with my hand. You could have done the iron technique on this one. This one would have been an easy iron technique yep. for you to just um, let your Mod Podge dry and then place your image on there and then iron it on. Either way would have worked. But I did, so like even though I trimmed up my decoupage paper, I did leave still, I still have a little bit of overhang and that's okay because it just sands off, sands sands yep, off sands. really easy and so i'll we'll just let that and all she does with the sandpaper is she just rolls it over the edge and it just goes right through it gives it a nice yeah. softened edge right so we'll just let that dry and then i can do that and then rodney can attach the frame to it and then that would be i think that'll be a really cute christmas sign yep it's not too gonna, big would, would you want but, to seal it up first or you just want to seal it later after you get it because a lot of people are, are, we got a lot of questions this week about whether or not the ink would run on yeah. our. Yeah, I can seal it up. I can yeah. seal it up with okay. my podge because that's what I have over here. I don't have the clear coat over here. If or it, if you, I can get the clear yeah. coat. Yeah, it's in there. I'll go get it. It would be in there. She's yeah. going to clear coat this, guys. I can clear coat it. That um, way y'all will see that this this ink doesn't run. Because clear, that's a, using the clear coat to seal it up is my mark preferred way. I mean, you can use Mod Podge for sure, but clear coat is the preferred way. You want satin? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. We usually use flat, 
but I think all of our flats. I think I'm out of flat here at the house. I yeah. think I have it at the store. So I'm just going to let that dry a little bit more. Let the Mod Podge dry before I turn around and put the um, clear coat on that. Okay, so this one, same thing. I just kind of want to figure out where my image and then just run my hand down the frame so that way I know where to trim it off at. Tina, we use an inkjet printer. Yes. For anything that's not just black. If it's just black, we'll run it through our laser jet at the store because uh, it's just one of those uh, document printers. But it prints black really well. I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to kind of cut. Bean is on her way home right now, my Ooh. lady said. I know two people that are very happy if Bean is on her way home. Who's the two people? May May and Ben. <laughs> I thought it would be Bean. I bet Bean is happy. You're so funny. But I bet. Three people. Yeah. Dennis, my main bean. Yeah, my main said, yes, we are. And yeah. I'm sure she is too. I bet so. Doggy school is hard. No, we okay. just make sure that we use inks that are aqueous durable. That way they don't run when they get wet. As far as getting the image crisp, as long as you are using it, a good high quality image, like so, I'm always printing at either 600 DPI or 300 DPI. I never go below that. That's the only way to get a really crisp image. But if you have a laser jet, that's the way to go because you don't have to prep your paper afterwards. Like so, we have to. We have to prep our paper with a fixative, even if the even with the aqueous durable ink. All right, there's your coat of that. So basically, that means none of the uh, off-brand inks. You could use it on a canvas, I would imagine. You could use it on anything, really. The what? The deck posh paper. Oh, I bet you could put it on a, a canvas and the canvas has the texture to it. And then as you. Um, if you have something stiff behind it, yeah. you use a brayer roller, you could ro you probably could, roll yeah, it down. Yeah, absolutely. The and, then, texture. and then let it be in the texture. Yeah. Tony says she loves the Standing Santa. We sold a bunch of Standing Santas this week. I like it a lot. Both online too. and in the store. Yeah. We chose these. We chose these bigger images because, see, like, to people, see the potential of what of what you could do with it. Like it, you know, and I think there's a lot of things you could do with it. Um, I think you could put it on um, trays. Trays, yeah. Yeah, like you, you can find those metal trays all the time, um, and you could give it a good coat of of paint and um, decoupage your image in there on a tray. I like the wooden signs um, because the this size is easy to store, um, and then you can put it out and then put it back, you know, that kind of thing um, without having. Some people don't change up their full house decor. Like, they don't take a bunch of stuff down to put up Christmas decor, but I feel like this is, a, is an easy touch that you could add to a mantle or a table, or you could even hang it up if you wanted to. I mean... So that is that image. So I'm just mashing it down really good. And then I still left a little bit of the overhang on there. So I can just sand those off. And I might need to add a little bit more. I just sent, I just added the link, Donna, to the uh, decoupage paper. Tina, you should be able, as long as you're using Epson ink, you should be good to go. You just want to make sure that you let that ink dry. And 
and but if you're using like CP, I think is the big one on Amazon yeah. that a lot of people are uh, a lot of people buy, and I've been guilty of it too because it works great on paper, but it does not work on decoupage. It will run. Right. Okay, so where your overhang is, you can just use um, a piece of sandpaper. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, and you just kind of go in a downward motion on the edge, and it just gives you that clean. I want to zoom in on this right, camera. Kinda, yeah. You just go down the edge, and then they tear off. Yeah, Tina, if you're using Epson ink, then you should be good to go. Uh, make sure you let it dry and do not overwork the image. So don't let your wall... Don't, don't over Mod Podge it or Clear Coat, yeah. however you're sealing it up. You just want to be thin and quick. Thin and quick. Is... If you're really concerned about it, you can pick up a fixative spray. Uh, not yeah. workable. I think a crystal clear matte by Krylon is a is a permanent fixative that's used on canvases. Right. I think it's like fifteen dollars. It's either fifteen or sixteen dollars. Like I think sometimes you can actually find it at Walmart for like eight bucks. Sometimes. You know, Walmart's iffy on what they have some with when it comes to the paint section. Right. So that's that. Same thing all the way around. This might be my favorite part. Is this part? Oh, it's softening that up. Yeah. Yeah. Taking. When you do it to the, she does it on when she does the large decoupage like prints on the table. Furniture. Yeah. So on the tabletops. It's it's really one of those satisfying moments. Yeah. Because at first you're looking at it going, man, I don't know about this, but right after she finishes rounding that over and, and, and sanding it off, it looks great. And it's not hard. I mean, you don't have to use a lot of pressure or anything like that. Dixie Bell releases their, their line of dec decoupage paper, and they got some new ones coming. So as soon as they're available, because they discontinued a couple of them. So as soon as they have those available, I'll put those online. Oh, the big, that big one? Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited about uh, getting that one. Um, it's a lot bigger than this. I think it will be a fun piece to um, definitely use. Okay, so I got, I'm just going to use clear coat and satin. And I'm just going to go over the image to make sure that it's all sealed up. It doesn't take a bunch. The key is that you just don't want to overwork anything. See how she's doing single strokes up and then a single stroke down, but it's over. It's not overlapping, there, so yeah. she's always kind of doing. You're not looking for like, um, I mean, you can see where it's wet in the light. I know it's not going to be easy to see on camera, but um, when you're going, you can see where it goes. where you went and not it gives it a light sheen and if you're printing these yourself your biggest areas that you're going to have issues with are going to be anything that's that's really black right like pure black black your red so if you're doing just like like Very man different. on the moon right like we did it's best just to run it through a laser jet and the uh Laser jets that just do black ink are much cheaper than colored laser jets. And clear coat actually dries pretty fast, but this is on paper, so it really, you know, it goes into the paper more so than if you were doing furniture, you would definitely. When you use clear coat on furniture, like if you're doing a small piece of furniture or anything like that, it has like a very light bluish tint to it, so you can kind of see exactly where you're going on the furniture. And then the same thing goes with it. You just don't want to overwork it. You just want to do your, you know, thin coats all the way through and then let it dry. And then um, for this, this one coat is fine. Like I'm not going to put anything else on it, but for a piece of furniture, I usually like to go um, by two, two coats, two coats of clear. Donna, technically you could use a regular brush 
for uh you can for the mo for well for the the clear coat you can most definitely use oh, a, yeah. a, re a regular brush right we tend to stick with one inch artist brushes yeah they're just easier that way you're you know that you're getting a good paint a good clear coat load without overloading the brush my fear with a regular brush like the dixie bell flat or the uh many that missy likes to use all the time to paint you can easily load it overload it and then you're wasting product because you don't need that much product on your brush that's why those the little brushes like that work really well for pieces like this because you don't want to waste any of the product like what i just used on this was nothing it wasn't even a, probably not even a quarter of an but ounce. if you take a brush like this and stick it in there you're going to load it up by that much and then you risk oversaturating the and then, ink, yeah. and then you're going to have runs. And then there's that, and then you just, there's, you use product that you didn't need to use. So for small projects like this, I use the little artist brush. For big projects, I will use the brushes. And then I, ha I like to keep my clear coat brushes as my clear coat brushes, my paint brushes as my paint yeah. brushes, because... By chance, if I didn't wash my paintbrush good enough and there's anything in it, you don't want that in your clear coat because your clear coat is your top coat. That's it. You have to sand that back down if you're wanting to get something out of the clear coat. That I've learned that from experience. Trash in a clear coat. Trash in your clear yes. coat from your brush because your brush wasn't as clean as you thought it was. Because it's, the clear coat is thin. It's not thick at all like chalk paint is. Right. So. That one, you like to use uh, that scarlet brush for clear coats at yeah. the store. It's thin. Yeah. I and haven't loaded any Dixie loaded. Bell brushes on our website yet. No. But they're coming this week. I ordered a whole bunch too. It's a lot of Dixie Bell product. Yeah. Yeah, no joke. It's 700 different products. Yeah, it's a lot. I think I've uploaded 500 so far yeah. of just Dixie Bell. That's just the chalk paint, the silk, and the clear coats. I still have to add their Terra, clay-based Terra. We're going to be using it in a project pretty soon because it builds up a lot of texture. Similar to a uh, traditional artist paint. We have a few things that we're excited to yes. get to the website. Um, and next week we got something really cool. I think, yeah. Live. I think next week I was live. If you um, come back with us next week, I think we'll have some interesting stuff that um, would be fun for y'all for sure. And uh, we'll have that loaded up into the website. If you haven't already um, signed up for our, our newsletter, in the, the yep. email blast and that kind of stuff definitely go to our website and sign up for that um so that way you can be the first to know of any new product that goes on the website or you know stuff like that um and then if you are not local to us um be sure to check out our facebook page because we do have 74 vendors inside our store and they all have fully stocked booths and they bring in new items all the time um, and we post pictures of that and we can ship most items so if you ever see anything on our Facebook page um, don't hesitate to send us a message um, let us know uh, that you're interested in it we'll uh, give you as much information as we can on it we can send you a pay link um, figure out what your shipping would cost and get it sent out to you um, Absolutely, because uh, we can't have all of their products on our website. Could you imagine that? No, I, I, it's hard enough to load our stuff up there. And there's, so like I said, we have 74 vendors in the store. So, and they all carry in everything from handmade to vintage to antique, um, glassware, I, oh, everything. Jadeite, uranium glass. Yeah. Um collectibles, uh, cookie jars, McCoy, um, in the spring, you know, they'll come in with a lot of the planters, uh, just 
Donna, the brand of clear coat we use is made by Dixie Bell Paint Company because it's a, a truly clear, right, water-based coating, and it's really good for this type of stuff. This is because Mosh Podge is so thick. This is my favorite way to seal up the decoupage paper. Um, and to keep from any wrinkles happening is which I did really good on this one. I'm proud that I didn't get any wrinkles in it. That's where iron it on works. The really iron well. on would have went would have worked perfect for this as far as the wrinkles go if you were worried about wrinkles. And that's a really easy technique too. Is it food safe? Is it food safe? Well, I know you can use it on baby cribs and stuff. It's non-toxic, no VOC. Um, you know, people ask if stuff's food safe all the time, like a I don't know, I don't varnish know. or polyurethane. And you know what's funny is, you'll be told no, that polyurethane is not food safe. But it is. You just have to read the back of the can and know that it has to be a... Fully cured, and it takes. I think the I think the average length of time for a fully cured polyurethane would be thirty days. But the back of the can will tell you when it's full cure time. Is there's a lot of stuff out there, but if you think about uh, countertops at restaurants and stuff, those are usually either epoxy or they're polyurethane. Do you want to put the frames on these? Yeah, I'll put the frames on those real quick. Yeah, and then I'll be able to sell And then that. you can see chat on the other screen over there. Right. So there's that one and that one. Again, the clear coat dries um, pretty clear. Um, so it won't be nothing for him to throw the frames onto those, and then I'll be able to show you those products. Okay, so the other thing that I want to work on today is these. Okay. So we do not waste scrap wood in this house. Like I save every little piece of wood that he has like as a cut off or whatever. So he's been working on the cutting boards for the cutting board class, the one that we're holding um, at Meme's uh, Craft Acropolis. And then we have the online class too. So these are like cutoffs from those cutting boards. And he uh, set them up and made bookends out of them. I think that would be really cute. So what I want to do is paint them, and then I have the would you bin um, little flowers. So what I'm thinking, what I think I want to do is um, I want to paint these in the green color, the English ivy. Um, it's my favorite green right now. The it's Dixie Belle's new green. I want to paint these green and then I want to kind of lightly distress around the edges, but I want to paint the flowers white. And I can't decide, I would, I'm probably going to go, it's either white or it's either I want to paint them cotton or I want to paint them drop cloth. That's where I'm still stuck at. But uh, we have, Dixie Bell has this called gilding wax. And what I want to do is after I've painted these and um, they dry, I just want to put a little bit of the gilding wax and I just want to touch the edges of the flowers so that way they pop, the dimension and everything pops. So this is the project. <laughs> this is the one that, um, oh, Tamitha said, hey, hey, Tamitha. Um, that I want to start working on while he's doing those. So the first thing I want to do is paint it with the English Ivy. And like I said, like we have, I have a whole storage container outside and it's just scrap wood. I just don't throw any of it away because I feel like there's, it can eventually have a purpose. And I think that these are, would be really cute bookends. So I'm just going to, Give them a coat of the green. And this green is my new favorite color, like I said. I'm 
And I think it would look good with the flowers. I just can't decide, which I'll ask Rodney when he gets into what he thinks, um, if I should go with drop cloth. Because drop cloth is just a softer white, more like a, it's, in the name says it, drop cloth. Um, if you've ever seen a drop cloth, it's like a linen color, I guess you would say. Um, it's not white, but it's not cream. It doesn't have a yellow undertone to it. Is kind of my favorite color to go with when I'm not trying to be bright and white. But I feel like for this green, I think that it would work best. And I think it's fun to do little pieces like this with a pop of color because if you you can kind of mix it in with whatever you've got, the core you've got going on. So like on a bookshelf with a bunch of books and stuff like that, you know, just a little bit of pop of color would be fun. Move back in. And then this color is also on our website too. So if you're interested in using it for any kind of project, we have it available too. So we need to paint them. See if I can. And then after these are all dry and everything, I end up, I will end up painting the bottom of them to complete out the project. Yeah, it was much easier to paint the outside first than paint the inside. So that way you don't get paint all over your hands. When Rodney's not here, I don't talk a bunch. I'm not a great talker when I'm working. So you just have to bear with me. Oh. And this paint really does go a long way, guys. Like you, I've painted, this is the 32 ounce in this, and I've painted a couple of different end tables and some smalls with it. And it's a little over halfway, a little under halfway probably, yeah, halfway through. It really does go a long way. All right, got it done. I bet they're glad you're back because I went without talking. You can't go without talking. I can't go. I told them that I'm bad at not talking. Lorna said she loves the color green. I love this color green. And this color is what? English ivy? English ivy. Tamitha said, hey, friends. I saw that. Okay. So, yeah. It was the easy peasy on getting those stapled in real quick, framed up. The hard part was finding my wood glue. It's in here. Yeah. Well, I use a different one. <laughs> one that doesn't dry as fast.
So if you guys use wood glue, tight bond too uh, is, is great. It dries quick and uh, you can actually friction rub it until it dries up. Right. Okay, so those are drying. So these are the frames. How do you want to do it? Let's go main camera. There you go. So I think they turned out really good. I think they're just big enough. You could put them on a mantle. You could put them on a little end table. But you could also hang them up if you wanted to. Can you see them good? Yeah, you can see them really good, actually. Yeah. That one's getting a strong shadow on it because it's not even with this one. Right. Well, I don't want to get it too close to the, the green. made it save paper now since we're saving scrap wood does that make us relics yeah there you go save <laughs> scrap wood i told him i was like i save i save all of our scrap wood like we have a container out there and i just throw everything in there because you don't know what you can do with them these turned out i really like that i told a lot. you you would i thought i when i came I up with that cool idea theme. yesterday i thought it was gonna look great yeah so this is our decoupage paper that you can get on our website, and this is uh, walnut, no paint gel stain, if yep. you like that color. And those are just offcuts from making the uh, right. the back side of the board. So we, we don't waste any wood, because literally that came from the same board that I cut those out of. Yeah, those are really good. I like those a lot. That's what I was telling them, that these were the cutoffs from um, the cutting boards that you've been working on getting ready for the class yes so and then you just kind of throw me together some bookends and i think they'll turn out really good she had this idea with the other ones from when i did the original right handle because i needed to change up some of the handles do you do all the different holidays it'll be great to change them out with the holidays wouldn't it be a fall one would look really good like that yeah. The pumpkins would be really good like that. Um, Printing our own decoupage papers fair, is very, it's a new thing for us. Because mm -hmm. we had so, to hammer out the process. Right. And that took a while. Um, the I'm kind of more in the Christmas mode. Yep. Like focus on that because like in our business or whatever, you kind of got to be three months ahead yeah especially for christmas so uh for christmas being like i kind of quit doing fall stuff and i'm kind of more focused on the christmas stuff because um there's a lot is which that's where i was saying like um next week i think we've got some exciting stuff for y'all um, were, were you gonna paint the appliques before yeah i want to okay so that was a uh, cotton or drop cloth uh, for this green well, since Cotton's going to be white. Yeah, but since you're using the gilding wax, I would use drop cloth. Yeah. That way it's a darker, a darker white. A darker white. It's not as bright, bright. So when you see your Dixie Bell paint getting putty light like that in the bottom, all you got to do is add some distilled water, just a tiny bit. Just a little bit of water and then stir it in. So they are. They're wooden flowers, Tina. They're made by a company called Wood, Wood You Bend. Bend. So you can add these to furniture. Um, you can heat them up with um, a you heat. You use a blow dryer, a heat gun. Yep. Um, but in, and you can bend it around the surface. Right. So they make all kinds of uh, different ones. These are just the ones that we have at the moment. Um, and for this, I don't have to heat them up because my surface is already flat. So I'm kind of just gluing them onto a flat surface. But if you were putting them on a curved um, surface. And you can easily just heat them up and bend yes. them to your project. Because we actually have used the uh, the the roping that they make, right? And we've wrapped it around furniture, and that way it, it's a seamless look. I when we can't I... get when when we can't make air dry clay work for us, we use wood you bend. And I'll, I'll throw a uh, link up here in the box for the flowers. Yeah, I do. Because that's the only product I have by right Would now. You Bend online at the moment. 
They have some pretty stuff though, for sure. But we had we had one option. Uh, well, the other option that we were going to do is we were going to make resin cast uh, flowers to put mm -hmm. on here, but then I remembered I had a bag of these. Yes, there's five that comes in a bag. Yep, you get fourteen yeah. ninety five. Right, and it's a, a a thing of five of a them. A thing of five, yeah. But what makes this product so unique is that it bends. So when you heat it up, yeah, we'll have to show them how you can heat it up because you can use that um, other stuff. You could heat it up and yeah, the trim. Do it into I a, think we have some of yeah, it here because you could the curve of that. Yeah, you, you could have easily. Could do that. Yeah, if I would have planned that out better, I could have. I could have done. Well, that. we totally forgot we had those products because we don't we don't like to sell stuff unless we've tested it out first. Right. And we've used the wooden mm -hmm. rope before on that uh, cabinet. Right. And since we don't have to bend the flowers, that's kind of awesome yeah. because it's going on flat wood, so we can just glue it. Yeah. They paint up really easy. Because we wanted to do resin cast, but that you know, it's hard to it's hard to throw that on a video on a live video and have and have it not be forever. Yeah, you can bend it before you paint it is what I would recommend, and then paint it afterwards because you can bend it, you can pre-bend it to the surface. So that way, yeah, if you were going to heat it up and at attach it to like a furniture or something like that, definitely heat it up and get it. Get um, it attached formed. and then let it dry and then go through and paint yep. it so that way that's the best way to do that because if you if i was to heat this up and bend it the flower petals would stretch out um so you would want to just leave it natural be, and then paint it afterwards yep because i would think it would Tear the or tear the paint or crack the paint. Oh yeah, you yeah, and then you end up doing the work twice because you're touching it up. But yeah, you can bend it first and turn paint it after you get it formed to the surface that you want it to go on. You turn around and you paint it up, and then you just glue it back down to the surface. As long as you remember how you had it oriented, you, it's. Obviously, it would kind of slot in the way you had it oriented. It's that. really cool. It's a neat product. It's a European company that yeah. makes it. Yeah. And they have the, the patent on this stuff. Right, because DC Bell just is like a stockist, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're, yeah. And so we can buy, we have to buy it through Dixie Bell. We, yeah. Uh, as soon as it cools down, Lisa, it's, it's cure time on, on bending is super quick because it has to get hot enough to bend. You just hold it in place for a couple seconds and then release it. It's and It's really the... light. It's not heavy or... And it's not really wood. It's like... Uh, like particle? It's like... M... Yeah, it's like MDF. Like wood shaven. All molded, glued together. Glued together. It's really neat. I'll show it to this camera here. Yeah. Maybe it'll focus. There we go. So it's got a unique texture, but it's very conducive to doing that type of work. You could add it to so many things. Mirrors, picture frames. Um, you could do a little block footer and then have like a whole thing right. with it so like you could decoupage an image on it and then add the flowers so it's like a pop of 3d or something like that yep. like you, there's all kinds of things that you could do with it um and the advantage of would you bend over like how we will take and cast handles from resin in order mm -hmm. to match stuff to make sure that our, our furniture piece remains at least the appearance of of being the original handle because we're having to manufacture it from a very hard resin you could use resin and bend it but the problem with that is is it it stretches um unlike this this will stretch a little bit but you don't have to worry about it stretching and melting and breaking when you go to 
to heat up your plastics. Right. Because we, who, who, I use smooth on products is what I use. I used to use uh, acrylic resins, but now we just use plastic resins because they're not as VOC ish. They paint up really easy. And mold making can be really fun, especially if you're, if you really like making a lot of stuff, mold making and resin casting is awesome. Missy likes making molds and putting air dry clay in them. As long yeah. as the mold's thin and not too thick, it works out perfectly. That's what originally I thought I was, yeah, but then I, I kind of wanted it to have dimension too, is which these do more so than the air dry clay. The toughest thing about these is getting in all those little those little nooks and crannies. Yeah, but it's not bad. Just use a little paintbrush. Yep, a little bitty artist brush. You can use makeup brushes too. Uh, yeah, that's what your mom used My to mom use all the time. My mom taught me that. Um, she would just old eyeshadow brushes and stuff like that. She would use those um, for detail and stuff like that. Uh, I think that's the whole reason why she got an Ipsy subscription. Probably. <laughs> Was to get those brushes. Because Ipsy will send you a bunch of uh, eyeshadow brushes and stuff like that. And she just would uh, use those to get. Because some furniture has all that really, you know, ornate detail. Yeah. And so it's really easy to. And we tend to dry brush over all that. Yeah. To keep the highlights highlights and keep the darks dark. All right, so there's all of those. Mold making is not a long process. We could probably, I don't know about a live, but I can do a video on it for sure and just, and post it. Like, um, like where we take, like where we take something that we want to make a copy of and just make, oh, yeah, make yeah. the mold. Like using. handles and stuff like that, yeah. how we use it for that. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go through with this and give it just a second coat real quick. Mold making, your your, your biggest time with, mold, with actually making a mold is cure time. So molds t typically take 12 hours to actually cure up, but I'm pretty sure we could demold one. If I do a regular video, for sure it'll work, because oh, yeah. then I can demold it and then everything and show you how it. cool that is. And you can use anything as your base con base container to pour it in, as long as you have your as long as you have your piece attached properly. Like with hot glue. No. You, well, yeah, that is what I use. Yeah, what I yeah. use hot glue to seal around it. Yeah, that's right. Because it just just peels off. Something like these would you bins would be easy to uh, make a mold out of but you'd have to prepare it beforehand. Oh yeah. I like I like the process too. The the reason the whole reason I learned how to do mold making in the first place was because I used to make I used to make pens and I liked the resin cast uh pen blanks all different kind. And so I had I would make custom molds so I could go ahead and have the tube already in there, so I could just throw it up on the lathe as soon as it was demolded and start turning it, without having to worry about gluing anything together. Right. I, made some, I made that really cool mesh one out of steel tubing where I cast the steel mm -hmm. tubing in the clear. Mm -hmm. That's how I learned the difference between all the different uh, resins too, between polyester resin. A, an acrylic based resin like uh, alumilite, which if you use alumilite, if you're doing a thick pour, you need a pressure chamber, which I have one because I did my fair share of alumilite stuff. Right. My favorite thing I did was I, I would use a uh, resin based product to seal up wood, old wood like that falling apart 
pithy wood, and I would make stuff out of the wood after I would seal it up using a stick fast woods. What was it called? You soak it down in it. You use a vacuum chamber to pull all the air out of the sails, and it brings the plastic stuff up through the sails. And then you can throw it in an oven and bake it for 30 minutes at uh, like 130 degrees, and it cures it. Stabilizer, wood stabilizer. Oh, yeah. That's, I don't know why I couldn't think of a word. But that particular kind is the way I like to do it. I think, I'm, I think these are going to turn out cute. Yeah, they are. I like that. I really like that green. This green is is really my favorite. Linda says she likes it too. Yeah. So I have, um, there's a piece of furniture at the store that I've already painted that I almost want to take right back off the floor and paint in this green. The dry sink with yeah. the mirror. I've been, I've been saying it for a couple of days. I've it's, been like, um, I think I need to repaint that. It's painted black. It's painted in white because, um, you know, it's easy. But I think if this or Weeping Willow, that's another green, a new green that Dixie Bell came out with. Yeah, those are brand new products. Yeah, those are brand new colors. Weeping Willow is a lighter green. What would you call that? Um, more like a cottage green? Weeping Willow? Let yeah. Me look. It's a really pretty color and I haven't used it yet um, but I keep on looking at it I, but I think the dry sink that I have I think it needs to be um, scuff sanded and painted with this green and then yeah it's a light a light green it's like a cottage green I think more than this where this is a more a little bit more bold but I think they're gonna look really cute with the flowers so I'm just going to let these dry up a little bit and um, so that way I can distress them up before I apply my flowers. That looks so cool. Those frames turned out really well, I, I think. I think they did too. I keep telling you this one. The, I, this one is my absolute favorite, but so is the walk in Santa. It took me a second to put it on the main camera. I like it. I can't tell which one's my favorite. I think he's cool. Yeah. Yeah, he did a really good job with them. So I think the full size decoupage papers could be do you could use a lot of them for different things, different things. You could use the full size uh, decoupage papers on old Christmas tins or like just cookie tins. Right. Like you could um, like, okay, this is kind of what I keep a lot of my paint brushes in. That's uh, just a, a vintage York. A vintage York tin. Yeah. But like you went, might not want to repaint this one, but I mean, you could, I don't know how old it is, but. 1990. It's not that old. Lone Star Lady. You can put that in the Yes. Room. The green things, they are bookends, and she's going to be a, a, attaching those uh, Would You Bend the flowers you onto bend them. Flowers to them. And then she's going to gild wax them with gold gilding wax. Right. Is it? Let's see if I can. I'm kind of just letting everything dry a little bit before I go to the next step. I really like how this Santa turned out, though. Mm-hmm. It's always so satisfying when something turns out exactly the way you think it's going to turn out in your head. Now, those I'm going to put in the store for sale. I don't think I'm going to put... I was... Because I haven't really started putting anything Christmas online yet.
But I do. I probably will start working on that soon. We haven't put anything Christmas on the store yet. Everything's I haven't. I do have a vendor that is just going to flip her booth over till Christmas. Um, I've been looking at my Christmas stuff and trying to figure out what direction I'm going to go for what booth or whatever. Um, Because I don't really like mixing my fall and Christmas together. Right. Because usually when I pack up my fall, I put it where my Christmas is in the back of the store. And then I just rotate it out like that. Yep. So. It's yeah. a big, big changeover, too. When we change over from fall to Christmas, when it's I a flip huge the store event. Over, the store. It's huge. It usually takes me a couple of days. And then and it, I just, I'm there from before we open until afterwards like and then if like on sundays we're closed i'll try to go in there on sundays and do it because we put up two giant christmas trees what one's nine foot and the other one is one's ten foot and one's no the one is nine, one's foot, nine I foot and one's yeah. eleven foot yeah because twelve foot hits the ceiling hits the ceiling so i do those and then i have we have these giant uh Nutcracker, nut tin sol yeah. toy soldiers. I have giant nutcrackers and then the true Christmas trees and then all the little Christmas displays and then the Christmas windows. I got to flip all that on top of flipping all of the booth space and store spaces over to Christmas. So it's it's a lot. It's a lot of work in a very short amount of time. But it's fun. It is fun. And then the kids were saying the other day um, that they couldn't wait for Christmas music. And I'm like, um, you better watch what you say because November the 1st, the store radio flips over to Christmas and then it doesn't turn off until after Christmas. So I'm like, listening to Christmas music for eight hours at the store is um, great at first, but then <laughs> it kind of gets um, a, a little bit. But I don't think the one, the station that we listen to doesn't play um it plays the old Christmas music. Sometimes it it plays my favorite one, which is Mannheim Steamroller. Yeah. Or, um, I was just thinking Mariah Carey. It plays that one. Does it play yeah. the Mariah Carey Christmas? Yeah, yeah. I think people got that one pretty heavy coated there. This one? Yep. It's still wet. Yep. If I hit them with my heat gun, I can. Well, hit them with your heat gun. That way it uh, dries up faster. Is it going to be loud on my mic? Uh, you can turn it I can. Well, you can turn it off by holding that power button down. There you go. All right, guys. She's going to heat gun this real quick. That way they'll dry and we're not wasting your time. If anybody has any questions about anything that Rusty Relics or about what we're selling or about what she's doing here, just hit me up in the chat. Let me know. If you're watching this after the fact, uh, let me know in the comments. And I will try to answer everything to the best of my ability. And if I can't answer it, I'll get Missy to answer it. Our open house for Christmas is coming. It's going to be the same weekend as May May's, November 10th and 11th. So it's going to be a Friday and a Saturday. We're going to be giving away a total of 240 Christmas ornaments. Marilyn, we do not currently ship to Canada. And... Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to, the best way to go about doing that right now. Uh, I went to May May for advice on that, so she's gonna she's helping walk me through that because that's uh it's a little more complicated than I had anticipated, and a lot more expensive than I would have ever imagined. I didn't know that I've bought stuff from Canada, and my shipping's never been bad, but. I was going to, I'm shipping a kit to somebody and I did not know that shipping was going to be more than the kit. So that was, uh, crazy. So right now 
we're still trying to figure out that, that the best way to do that to minimize shipping costs. That way, you guys aren't spending a fortune because you buy something for thirty nine ninety nine. It's not fair that you have to pay another forty dollars to ship it, unless it was huge and ex and heavy. Paige, we're located in Clanton, Alabama, very center of the state. Donna says you're hard to hear. How about now? How about now? Do it again. How about now? Donna, were you able to hear better now? I think she I had, think I turned it back on. Yeah, her mic's back on. Back on. And she doesn't talk loud a lot. So I, don't. I, I don't. If I put why. the mic on, I won't talk loud. If I don't have the mic on, then I'll talk really loud. <laughs> yeah. So I'm the opposite. So, if you come in the store, she's super loud. Yeah, you'll hear me throughout the store. Yeah, for sure. But you put a mic on me, and then I'll be really quiet. Okay, so I, I heat. I use the heat gun, and I dry these up so that way I can go ahead and distress them. And all I'm doing is using a little piece of sandpaper, and I kind of just want to hit the edges. I don't want to do crazy distressing. And then when you're using, like, this paint, when you distress it or sand it, the the green is different just don't stress about it though because it'll um all even out when you go to either wax or clear coat whichever one you choose to do which on these i probably will just wax instead of clear coat um the curved part is just some off cuts from where i'm making the cutting boards for the cutting board classes right since we're making bookends it doesn't make bookends need something to help reinforce the upper portion so it doesn't collapse that's all that is no big they were cut on a scroll saw just don't waste wood <laughs> that's right and we have a lot of we have a lot of wood because i used to do wood. a lot of lathe work so yeah I'm just kind Which of... I just cleaned it up and replaced the belt on it and everything. On the big one. I had already done the little one a couple weeks back. So that's all I'm wanting to do. It's kind of just a little bit of distress in here. And letting the wood go through because I gotta go like that, right? Yeah. Paige, we'll probably be doing... Uh, we're starting to add DIY wood kits so let's say you're interested in making these bookends. I can have all the pieces or we can go ahead and assemble it and, and, and ship it. That's, yeah. not, that's something we're actually actively working on because that is. Uh, we had a lot of requests for just the wood standard, the stand, the little sitters, the little block sitters, just the block sitter, but they wanted it pre-stained. So we went ahead and cut a hundred, uh, not a, yeah, 170 of those. Something like that, yeah. So you know, can order week. that from us online. And since we're not painting it or anything, it's it's cheaper than it would be if we sold it painted. Right, yeah. Just because then you can do whatever you want with it. So yeah, stuff like this is, I mean, just all, it's just the off cuts. And I never, the only thing that's not the off cuts is the upper and bottom portion. Right. And that's just because that came off of a piece where I had cut a bunch of stuff off of it and I was left with that one piece. So technically it is an it off cut. It is an off cut. But it's. And since we don't have to run out and buy it, we're able to, it's, we just have it here just sitting. It's. We, we can sell it for cheaper than if I was to make them custom constantly right. all the time. Okay. Uh, the sitters are one and a half inches thick, where these are three quarters. So these actually, no, you got to flip it over. There you, there you go. So these are actually more Let me grab something. conducive to this. One and a half inches is, is huge. Right. It's like having two two by sixes butted up against each other. 
but te I mean, technically you can do it. I had originally thought about, hey, I wonder if I could do these frames. And then I was like, well, I'd have to pre-drill the holes. I'd have to do, uh, like for an on, like for an in-person class, I can pre-drill holes. And, right. An in-person class, we could definitely do this in person. Um, to do it in a kit, though, I mean, you if you assembled the frame, what would be hard is if your decoupage paper, if you weren't, like I put the decoupage paper on. Right. And then I sand it off to make it to the frame. Um, well, what you could do is run a razor blade down the side of it. Yeah, you could. I mean, it. it there's a solution, I'm sure, to it. Right. Um, but that would be a, definitely be an easier in-person class versus a yeah online class. And that's one of the things we always think about whenever we're whenever we're showing something. Right. We want we want. We want it to be as easy as possible. Right. I'm going to make sure that I keep these lined up. Right. Okay. So what I, I want to add my flowers before um, I wax it because I don't want, I need the glue to adhere to the, to the, so I kind of just want to see where I want to position them. And I'm only going to do one side because you're not really going to see the other side. We're in our house. I'm sitting on one side of the <laughs> counter. She's sitting on the other. Yeah, because you don't get internet like this at the store. Yeah, no, the store. No, we, we can't. <laughs> I wish we could upload videos at the store. Because then, then we could, we could do show a lot you more really videos. Cool stuff. Yeah. Gosh, it's bad. I feel like it. It Can looks, you see it? Does it, it look on to camera, you? it looks, uh, no, you need to straighten these. Uh, she's got a much higher quality camera on her than I do right here. Because I don't want them straight. I want them to be. Oh, well, you got that one straight on that one side. Because of the pedals, the way the pedals work for that one. Because they don't have to be the same. Which I don't. And then the light bounces up top and it brightens me way up compared to her, but it drowns out the image in the middle if I change it. So her camera is just, it's a better camera. It's able to adjust to auto exposure. You think so like that? Rest. I think it looks good like that, yeah. What do you guys think? Y'all think it looks good like that? I'm going to glue it. Can here, I'll do it. I got it. I was just making sure that. So all I'm gonna do is put a little bit of the wood glue, and then I'm gonna rub it. Everybody said yes. Very yeah. pretty. I kinda like it like that too. And now you can rub the piece backwards and forth just a little bit. And you'll feel it grab. You're better at that than me. You are way better at that than me. Yeah, put a dot down. There you go. Just move it around, and you'll feel it grab. As soon as it grabs, you can let it go and move to the next piece. Wow. Paige says, I have a bunch of solo wood flowers I never did anything with that I could use like that on my pumpkins or something. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. And that's all part of it. Finding the most creative use for the things that you already have. I do not want that to move. And I don't know if I glued it like you. <laughs> I'm, telling like you, all you, you all, I'm telling you, all you have to do is move it backwards and forth, friction rub it, and then right. it'll stick. That's how I did every one of those wood rings on those segmented vases. She said, thanks for the inspiration and the ideas. Yeah. Uh, this is Type Bond 2 wood glue. Yeah. Since it's a wooden product, wood glue is ideal for I mean, you could soaking into the uh, backside of the, the right. wood you bend. Because you want to be careful what you use for wood you bend. You know what? You could heat these up and then glue them on. 
It just doesn't seem necessary. But it might soften it up to allow it to do the... Even though it's flat. You know, like how we were originally thinking that because it's flat, there's no reason to really heat it up. Yeah. But heat, could, heating up heating up tight bond ain't going to work. Well, no. I mean, I can't heat the ones that I just glued. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, like, if I took those over there and heated them up for a second, just to soften them up, and then put the glue and then heat it, put it on there, would it grab better? No, because it's not going to have any effect on a tight bond at all. Tight bond's going to cure regardless. That's why friction rubbing's the best thing to do. Tight bond ultimate, as as far as I know, tight bond ultimate is the fastest drying wood glue that there is. This glue, yeah. This glue dries really good. Thank you for watching, Debbie. Thank you. She said we're a real life Santa's workshop. I wish. Yeah. The trick to getting a good friction rub bond is to put enough glue on it. Because if it's me, I'd use my hot glue gun. But hot glue won't keep it on there for long. I know, that's what you say. Uh, gilding before. No, we're gonna gild. We're gonna use gilding I'm wax gonna, afterwards. Yeah, as soon as I get these placed, I'm gonna put some on there because it. It's just so. It's really easy. Yeah, and gilding it, wax is so easy to use. You'll be walking around your house looking for things to gild. It's got it, a smell it, though. It's it's a weird smell. It's not a VOC smell. It's not it's bad. A, it's not strong. It's not overpowering, but it just has this. You know. It stinks. It stinks. To you. To you, yeah. I, think I mean, it it's not, it's, it don't bother me. It don't bother me. But yeah, gilding wax goes on super easy. We use uh, our you, finger brushes. Yeah. And you, you just, um, it doesn't take much at all. And it really pops on colors. Like you could, I could actually take it and just go like that if I wanted to. Yeah. I don't know. Because I think we've been using the same can of Gildan wax for free forever now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm hoping that these are sticking. This one is not wanting to stick. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll start wearing the. I'll have to start wearing a, a Santa hat. She said. Oh. oh. You're not using any more of this drop cloth, are you? Yeah, I'm done. Okay. Uh, and no, I haven't used UV resin before. Okay, so here's my gift box. Yeah. This thing. Yeah. I've had it forever. And it's still half full. And it doesn't take any. It doesn't dry up. So you can as long use, as you put the yeah. lid back on it. I don't know. Because it's a metal can yeah, with a crimping just, lid. Right. All I really want to do, though, is just kind of like touch the tips of the flowers. Can you see it good? Is it going to show up really good when I do it? Uh, yeah. Because once I stick my finger in it, that's, I'm yeah. sick. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it'll show up. Oh, should I wax these first and then gild and wax them? Yes. No, not for, you don't have to do that for gild and wax. Yeah, because like I want this and then I want, if I go through and just Yeah, lightly. but you go ahead and gild the flowers, right? Yeah, but I don't want to accidentally, let me wax these up first before I go through and, um, especially around the corners or whatever. Because it's going to look better. Yeah, UV resin. I can see having to wear a respirator and a gloves. If you're looking for a, a resin that you don't have to do that with, Alumalite is non... It's, it, in my experience, it's non-odorous. But you do still have to wear gloves regardless. The worst is dadgum polyester resin. 
And yeah, polyester resin for wood turning makes a great turning wood blank. It's a hard plastic. It's amazing, but it is so dadgum strong as far as the smell goes. But I've never used a, the UV resin. I looked at getting a UV resin uh, 3D printer. I thought that would be cool. Oh, I think um, Kat's dad has one. I think Amazing Resin. Isn't Amazing made by a woman like? I don't know. She just asked if, if she used Amazing. I think Amazing Resin is used, is made by a woman like. Yes. Amazing casting resin that's made by Luma Light. Yeah, I think that works good. Yeah, the 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 biggest problem with, with uh Luma Light is the dry time. Now you can get some slow cure. You can get some slow cure uh Luma Light as well. I've always used the the, uh, the five minute. I think it's a five minute cure time mm -hmm. that I used to use. But I have a pressure chamber, so it's really easy to do uh, bubbleless casting with it with a pressure chamber. Yeah, well, that's looking pretty good. It's just easier to. And if you notice, like she said a while ago, the uh, the different the, how it how you distress the, it the green how the green the light green goes back to being the original dark green once yeah. you wax it or clear coat it. Right. So don't stress. Yeah, if you Paige, if you look at Illumilite's total catalog, they have resins that that take uh, up to thirty minutes to cure. They also sell uh, some. Almost ABS plastic resin and stuff. And they have quick dry resins, thin pour. Tina, we're using wax as a sealer in this case. And just sealing up the chalk paint. From where I distressed it and dis it discolors it a little bit, just I don't know the correct term for that or whatever. Darker colors, you know, like that, you can see the where you distressed it. So I'm just sealing it up. It gets rid of that. Um, which, I mean, you wiped it down with a wet rag. It would have done the same thing. But that way, it's just sealing up my paint. And for this piece, it's just easier to seal it up with a micro cloth, a microfiber towel versus. All right, so there's that. There's that and there's that. I think you'll like that uh, amazing resin. Uh, it's all I think they rebranded their whole thing, right? Let me. I'm gonna check real quick. I'm I'm pretty sure that all their clear resins are called amazing now. Well, no. Illumilite clear, and amazing clear cast epoxy. So epoxy resins just stink. They don't. Uh, they don't uh, have any VOCs usually. All right. I'm just gonna. Touch it with the gild and wax. Okay, I'm gonna put you on overhead only. So I'm just putting a little bit on my finger, like nothing. And then I'm just going to touch the tips of the flowers. Let's see if I can zoom you in.
Can you see it? I think so. You can see it in person. You can see it lightly. I zoomed the camera in the best I could digitally. I think I think amazing resin would work perfect for uh, making flower castings like this, as long as your your mold is thin. And by thin, I mean not very deep. That way, you don't have a bunch of overhangs. Because if you have a bunch of overhangs, you'll need a two piece mold. And two piece molds are a lot more difficult to ask. I mean, to to make. But no, I, you know, alumilite. I didn't realize now they have a, a a deep pour resin that takes forty minutes to cure, and I didn't know that until I just looked it up. So they're always changing their products. I think the resin we're using by Smooth On right now, it's it's a it's a uh, ten minute cure resin. I think so. As long as you pour it. So I learned one of the tricks to pouring resin. If something like alumilite, anything that cures really quick is to hold your container up high and pour it into your slot so you get a really thin layer as it goes down, a thin pour. That way there's no air bubbles in it. I See buy alumilite directly from them. Be careful because, you know, the flowers are still... I think it looks good. You can see it really good, can't you? Yeah. Like in person, you can see it. I don't know if you can see it on camera like you can in person. I'm going to turn it to the main camera and show them. Can y'all see that gild and wax? And it's just on the tips. That, I don't think you can. Yeah, you can. It's just on the tips. It's just on the tips of the flowers. So it gives it a, a really nice, crisp. Right. Just a touch. There we go. More light. Can you see it better? Not really. You can't really see it's it. It's hard to see it on camera, but you can see it in person. It looks really good. If you trim the edges up. That's what it? I should say. I'm going to trim the edges, trim up. the edges up. They'll probably be able to see uh, those better because those are actually darker. Did I do that wrong? I did it wrong. No, you didn't. No. Flip it up. I keep on doing there that. Go. There we go. I can see, you can see it in person. Yeah. It looks really good. So, okay, so what you can do is just kind of, it's still on the tip of my finger. I don't know if you can see it, which camera you got me going. I'm but all I'm doing around. is just going to go around the edges. Now you can see that. Yeah. Where I lightly distressed it, I'm just going to go around the edges. I'll go around the edges here. Kind of tie it all in. Paige, sometimes you can actually melt your container that you're mixing it in if you're not careful. I've done that before, not realizing that it was getting too hot. I cast a flower one time that's put a, uh, yeah, you can most definitely see that. I cast a flower using a luma light for a buddy of mine to make a bottle stopper after he got married. Forgot about that. And I I had to put it in an aluminum can because it was getting so hot that was it was it was burning my hand in the plastic before I could throw it in the the pressure chamber. And that was mixing it two specs. That's the problem with all that. Anything that fast dries is heat. That. All right. So y'all see how crazy that gilding wax looks? I can. Yeah. It goes like that. <laughs> I'm going to struggle with that going backwards. I've used this on lamps, furniture, stuff like this, um, knobs. Yep. 
like brass knobs and stuff that are like to a, a dresser like to get a dresser that has the original hardware is really it's fun and all I do is just clean it up really well and then I take the gold gilding wax and I just go over it and give it a little gold a little touch of gold a little touch and, of gold you know, and it changes the whole entire handle and it allows you to keep the same hardware Everybody's saying you did a good job with that. Oh, thank you. This is just scrap wood. But <laughs> that's my favorite thing about it is that it's just straight up scrap wood. And if you want really tight, crisp lines, just take if you tape it off. Right. Or you could use a uh, liner brush, like not, not not a liner brush is long. It's got a long tip, like artists write their names with on their paintings. If you use one of those, you can actually get a nice smooth line down the thing. Right. It's just easier to tape it off, to be honest. Uh, pressure chamber. Uh, so you pump those up with about 90 PSI of air. And yes, they are expensive. Uh, the bigger you get, the more wildly they get in, in the price. Lisa says she loves seeing before and after in real time. Isn't it fun? That is it. That's it? That is it. That looks good. You let good. the gilding wax dry, you know? You need it to dry all the way. I mean, you don't want to keep on... put it on, on the main camera so they can see that. Yeah, you don't want to keep on um, touching it and messing it because you're just going to spread it, you know, that kind of thing. And if you get it in a place that you don't want it, it's okay because you could take... Like, I actually have... It looks like right here. I touched it right here. It's not a big deal. I'll just take a little artist brush and I'll kind of go over that... Um, gilding wax, uh, wipe that off and then go over that gilding wax. So it's not a big deal. Um, but at the same time, it just adds to it. So yeah. Scrap wood bookends. Yep. Oh, they look, they look really good. I wish you guys could see the gilding wax on Especially the flowers. Especially on the flowers because it, it's just... I if it was the dark, cut. if it was darker, like uh, pa Paige used uh, copper, yeah. or if it was bronze, it would show up. Cause I, I, I like bronze is my favorite gilding. If the wax. flowers were black, they yeah. would show up. You're right, they for would, sure. Would show up great. But I just, I feel like the black would have been too. I feel like the white flowers or drop cloths is what I use. Yeah, I even changed the ISO on the camera. It's just. But you can see it on the green. So this it's the same way on top of the on the tips of the flowers. I, and I'll that's all I did was just lightly touch it. And that's the same I do the same thing on furniture, um, lamps or anything like that. If it has that detail on it that kind of gets hidden once you put a coat of paint on it, you can just bring it back with the gilded and wax and kind of bring that focus into it. And it's really good for handles too. So if you have a piece of furniture or a little side table or whatever that has the original hardware, save your money, um, use the gilding wax and make that piece, make it look brand new. And it's good. Autographed extra? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the one of a kind right there, scrap wood. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's all I got. That's all we got for that's today, guys. That's like I said, we were kind of unprepared. We were, it's been a crazy week with homecoming and the kids. We got homecoming game tonight. Um, oh, yeah. That kind of that. stuff. I mean, it's just been a week, but that's okay. Um, we have a lot of things that we're wanting to come with you to, um, next week. We're going to hopefully bring to you. Some pretty neat stuff, I think. Pretty neat stuff. I think y'all will like it. Um, I'm excited about it. I'm excited to do some of them so I can have them to show you on camera and everything. Um, if you say too much, you're going to spoil it. I know. So there's that. We're bad about spoiling things. Yeah. Um, be sure to, if you haven't already, get on Facebook and follow us there. And remember that if there are anything, um, items that you see that we post that you are interested in, please send us a message. Um, we can figure out what shipping would cost and um, go from there. Um, yep. That's about it. Uh, and then, yeah. Just, if y'all want to, y'all sign, y'all visit our website and sign up for that newsletter. Cause yeah, absolutely. I've been sending out, uh, newsletters every week now yeah. every time some, we change something like i had to change the links for our online class so for uh 
because it wasn't being handled properly. So I had to change it, move it. And so we got new links up. So I sent that out. Right. That doesn't affect anybody who's already signed up. So if anybody's already signed up for those classes, you weren't affected by the link change. I'm excited about the classes. I think the cutting board class is going to be a lot of fun. I think the do. ornaments class. Yeah, the, I think cool the ornament one. class is going to be really cool too. I think it's going to be fun. So if you haven't signed up for those and you're interested, just get on our website and... And the links for those are in the description. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys. We appreciate y'all coming out and sitting with us today. Uh, we're doing online classes for cutting uh, the the two-sided cutting board right. that May May made it showed on her channel and uh, the ornaments and then the the ornaments the ornaments, the ornaments are can be double sided if you want them to yeah. and we ship them you get them. all the brushes you get all the paints to, everything you need to do the project yep. we give you we give you you that one is ready to go in a box or not give you that's part of what you're yeah. you're buying yeah, yeah. and shipping's included and there's 12 images that you can pick and choose from so you can use them for something else or you can make them double sided ornaments yep. no big deal um yeah, but you, it comes with the paint, the Mod Podge, the brushes, and the ornaments, and 12 images to put on your ornament. The cutting board class is double-sided. It's, it's pre-painted. It's pre-painted. Um, Rodney hand cuts those out. Um, we paint them up, and we'll ship them to you like that. But you'll get the two decoupage images, the Mod Podge, and the clear coat, and the brushes to go with that one. Um, Paige, it is a live class. Yeah, they, those classes will be live, so. But if um, you miss the live, the video will, the link will stay active and the video will stay up for the, those who. Rodney will be with us on the live because I know that I have a tendency of being quiet. <laughs> so that way you can. Yeah, I didn't know she was going to get all quiet when I went outside. I'm, for I'm sorry about that, guys. That I just get, yeah, I get, I get focused on what I'm doing and then I don't think. I don't. I do not text and talk at the same time either. I'm one of those people. I can't do that. But you can watch TV and talk. No, I cannot. Yes, 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 yeah. She no, does. I cannot. Virgin River. <laughs> All right, Virgin River is my new TV show. That's what I've been watching, and I just finished up season five. Now I have to wait for December or November. Is that what it said for the next part? I don't know. Yeah, November thirtieth. Yeah, something like that. Brenda said that watching your first live inspired her to start painting again. Thank you. Uh, I she did, just yeah. redid her TV stand. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. I love painting. Yep. Well, you're in your zone, Lisa said. Yeah, I am in my zone when I'm working like that. She wasn't yesterday when she was stressing out about what we was going to do. Yeah. But I said, I got you. I, I got you covered. He threw me something together. I'm very happy with it. Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, y'all take care. Have a good rest of your day. Thank y'all. And uh, we'll see you again next Friday. I'll schedule a little bit, a little bit earlier than I did yeah. this time. All right. And, we'll uh, see ya. Bye, y'all.